Hi, uh, welcome to Stitch Therapy. It is a good one. All right, well, this is my first ever floss tube. Um, I've watched you guys for a year more now. I know you guys, there's a whole bunch of floss tubes in the, um, I guess it really started, I guess cross stitch started to take off again in the pandemic. Um, and I have, I've been, you know, wondering what can I bring, what can I bring to floss tube that hasn't already been said? <laughs> um, there are amazing stitchers. There are amazing people. There are amazing stories. And I thought, God, you know, I would love to be able to be seen in this community or be a part or a voice in this community, but I don't really have much to say. Um, my life overall is pretty awesome. And I use uh, cross stitch. I have used it my whole life as a, as a form of therapy, actually. I am a therapist. My name is Campbell. Um, my pronouns are she, her. And uh, I work in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia as a therapist at an outpatient clinic. Um, I was an actress for 35 years before that. 35 plus, I guess. I started when I was nine and uh, I kind of went professional in my teenage teenage years i guess I, I started building up those credits for sag and after in my teenage years uh doing film and television a little bit in high school and then later on um and all the way through i, I trained in england as an actress and came home and worked as an actress in dc for several years and around the Washington, Maryland, Virginia area. For those of you who are in the Beltway area, hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've had a meander in this life. I am, uh, I'm in my late fifties, and um, I live alone. I'm single. I have two dogs and a cat. Um, and like I said, for me. I guess the only thing I felt like I could add to the floss tube community was the story of how cross stitch in many ways has been an emotion, an emotional, emotional, <laughs> an emotional <laughs> resource, uh, an emotional resource for me, like a, a meditative practice that, um, but it's a little bit more. I mean, I have a meditative practice, but I, but for me, therapy has been a vital part of my life, um, as a recovering person, but also as, um, somebody who had a lot of childhood trauma and a lot of issues and needed to, uh, do 10 years plus, actually, I think I've probably done closer to 20 years of therapy. Um, before I became a therapist. So, um, in my journey of wellness, if that's a thing still, I know it was a thing in the eighties. Do we still talk that way? <laughs> um, in my journey of wellness, I have, um, always had a stitching project or some needle and thread literally to help me like stitch me into the world I feel like it's it's a way of like tangibly being present and it's just so important to me on that level you know it's kind of like it's not just a hobby for me it's um I I have finished projects that my mother started and I can tell you when she died I took all of her cross stitch stash and I was finishing these two projects, which I will show you. Um, and she died in 2002. And I have to say the healing and recovery for me of pulling my needle and thread across the threads that she had already stitched in the Ada fabric. 
I remember sitting outside the Metropolitan Museum of Art on a very beautiful sunny afternoon on the grass outside the Egyptian room and I pulled my mom's cross stitch out of the bag because my mom had always talked to me about going to the Egyptian room and we weren't able to do it before she got cancer and so I went and I, I took her cross stitch and I was sitting out there and I pulled the first thread next to hers on this piece that I was working that she was working on and I burst into tears and I couldn't stitch anymore and it was like the process of my grieving was stitching next to her threads almost as like it was a physical tangible way that I could touch her and also stitch beyond her life like stitch into back into life and I feel like cross stitch has been my, it has been a resource for me for healing. And so anyway, I don't mean to get like too, too deep into it, but I just thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I have been um, inspired so deeply by watching people work through their stuff or work through their cross stitch or their daily journals. And the floss tubers that I am drawn to are the ones that are just completely honest about what they're going through. They're not trying to look good. They're not trying to, you know, they're just showing up and saying, this is me. And oh, by the way, I cross stitch and here's some pieces I'm working on and having some fun with it or being able to be honest about where they are in their journey and there are some cross stitchers that are no longer on floss tube that that I miss you know I, I, I miss their journey I miss their energy there's a, a black cross stitcher and I can't remember her name it was like crafty creative stitcher or something and she was amazing and I have no idea where she went I don't think she's posted in over a year and then I recently um, have I've watched from the very first floss tube into her latest one this past week oh it's September 4th by the way 2023 did I say that that's the date um, so Laura in Australia who is uh, I stitch birds question mark um, <laughs> speaking of birds, that's my bird clock for you, Laura. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay. Um, so that's for you, Laura, uh, wherever you are in Australia, it's probably tomorrow there. Um, it's Monday here. It's a holiday here. It's Labor Day holiday here in America. And it's probably Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening in Australia right now. So. Anyway, uh, all you Australian, New Zealand stitchers, hello, I love you, you guys are great. Um, there are also people in Denmark, and um, oh, who else is the other one that I really find fun? Um, she has an Etsy shop, she's, oh, is it Botsy Stitcher or something? I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I I did not prepare with all of your names. Anyway, um, so yeah, you guys have really inspired me. So I'm like, well, heck, man, I'm just going to go ahead and and do it. Um, I my, my story is one of cross-stitch walks me through my life. That when I stitch a piece or I stitch something or I'm working on something, I can go back and I can look at that and I can say, oh, this was happening in my life. This is what I emotionally worked through when I was stitching this cross-stitch piece. And I thought, well, you know... That's my story. So I thought, well, okay, stitching therapy. That's, that's me. That's what I have to offer the community is, uh, I am a licensed therapist, um, and I stitch and stitching is part of my therapy and it is part of my world. And, um, so, uh, that was a really long intro, but anyway, um, if you, if you showed up and you like floss tubes where somebody just goes through their whips and, um, which I will do, I'm happy to do that. 
or you want to see fully finished pizzas and you just want to talk and you don't want to know anything about me or my life, um, this is not the floss tube for you. <laughs> Mine is um, this. My stuff, I think, I'm not going to be posting. I don't know when I'm going to post the next one. This is my first one. I don't even know how to edit this stuff. I literally, I'm just like, okay, whatever, let's try. Um, so... Oh, that's a message that just popped through. Um, so yeah. Um, what was I saying? Right. I'm going to show my whips, show my floss tube, but I'm also going to tell you the process of what I'm stitching. And when I stitch, it's, you know, it's kind of like the stitch with me as people tell you what's going on. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and show up and tell you what's going on. Um, so Without further delay, 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 boy, I am really brand new at this. I, <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's going to take me a little while <laughs> to get my to get my mouth in gear with this. Uh, and I've also got glare on my glasses and I'm very aware that I'm. Yeah, I'm so not. Some of you guys are so great. Like you've got pictures popping up and you've got little things at the bottom and you've got edits and it's all fun. I'm going to learn how to do that, but I don't know yet. So, um, little by slowly, <laughs> one video at a time. I've been talking for like five minutes, 10 minutes. I got to stop. Um, but let me, let me, uh, show you, let me show you some of my, my pictures. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to stop now and I'll come back and I will show you my whips. I'll show you the pieces that I did with my mom. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you the ones that I finished after my mom died that were hers and then I will show you some of the stuffs I've finished that I haven't framed but I have finished and then I will show you the I have two big looms I, have, I like to do huge pieces I don't know what's wrong with me but anyway <laughs> uh, I have a full coverage that's on a loom and I have another one that's not full coverage but it is a large sort of really old one from the 1980s Ooh, for all of you that like the classic ones that are out of print um, I have the, uh, does anybody remember the gnome band, G-N-O-M-E, the gnome band, where they're all playing little instruments? I have that, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> I bought it in 1989, I think, 1989, because I was in England when I bought it. It was a, a John, John, Jolly C, John C, something stitch. Anyway, I'll show you that. And uh, yeah, so let me stop talking, and I'll get these uh, whips for you and some stuff for you to see. Okay. Thanks for joining me again. Um, if you, you don't feel, uh, don't feel obligated to come back. Um, I just, I basically, I'm doing this so that I can show Laura my stuff. <laughs> Laura and I text and I said, should I do a floss tube? And she was like, yes, yes, you should do a floss tube. And I was like, okay, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not your normal floss tuber. I'm a little bit I'm just a little bit banana pants, but anyway, if you want to hang in there with me, feel free. And um, I'm going to stop now, and then I'll show you some cross stitch. Thanks for the intro time. Okay, this is a, a cross stitch piece that is, um, I have no idea. I think it was a pattern my mom got from a kit somewhere. Um, the base of the kit, I think she started it in 90... Oh. 394 and so she had done this part of the top and the wings those are my dogs outside barking sorry about that um, and it's in a plastic frame so there's glare I apologize for the glare but this is um, revelations 21.5 was the theme of my mother's service when she when she died, my sister had done the homily, and the my mother wanted the theme for her funeral homily. She told my sister that she wanted the passage, Behold, I make all things new as her the focus of her funeral, which was quite beautiful. So she had done part of this wing and this, and then I started stitching. She had done, she had done like, the LD and the comma, I think, and then part of this. I wish I don't have any before or after pictures, but anyway, this I finished it in 2002 as part of my 
my process. And then there's this lovely back stitch in here. I don't know if you can see, there's all of this back stitch, which I was not, I was doing it one square at a time. And I didn't back stitch the green palm, which maybe I could have, and I didn't do that. That wasn't what the pattern called for, so I didn't do it. Anyway, that was my mouth stitching pieces. And then I came in, so, and then I came in and just stitched in. That's the first one. The second piece I did that my mother started was this one. Uh, can you see that? This is a pretty, pretty well-known piece. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. This one is not on a... This one is not in a, um, let me see, how do I put this? This one is not, oh, this is weird. I hope this doesn't turn weird. Um, this one is not in a frame. I just put it out, like I just put it on the back. What I did was I did that and just put it on a, a board on the back. But this one I like because it, so you can see my mom's initials, Suzanne Stokes Eccles, there, 94 is when she started it. And then you go across, and she had done like this part, she had done some of these stitches, and actually one of them is missing a stitch in here somewhere, and I left it when she missed the stitch, when she, <laughs> instead of like, oh, no, I have to frog it out, no, I just left it. I left the mistake that she made in here. Oh, there it is. See that little section here? <laughs> she was doing this, and she got all the way up to here. And she, this part right here, she missed. She didn't stitch that little part. And I thought that was just so dear. I My mom used to say, Fato e mano, only God is perfect. So I left that as her little, as her little thing. Only God is perfect. So... There's that, and there are little, gosh, can you see the little beads? There they are. There are beads in there. So I went and got some different colored beads and put beads in there. And then there's my signature. I finished it in 02, Susan Campbell Eccles. There I am. So, and it's a little stained. It's got a few little stains in it that I could take it off and redo it but that's that piece hi guys hi i'm back so you have just seen my mom's um pictures and i hope that wasn't too laborious for you this is the picture of the gnome art oh this is so old and ragged look at this Ooh, can you see that so this is gnome the gnome band, sorry. The gnome band, I'm hoping that that's showing up. Wah, wah, wah. So this is from a company called, it's made in Holland, Lenarte, Lenart, L-A-N-A-R-T-E. And it was made in Holland and it has DMC threads. It's 60 by 49 centimeters, 23 and a half by 19 and a half. It's on uh, linen, um, which of course, in the 80s when I got this, I had no clue how to really stitch anything other than Ada, right? That's all I'd ever, that's all I'd ever worked on. So I think this is a 32 count linen fabric, right? But I ended up, I have been working on it. Like a crazy woman, I started doing one over one on this. So it's really, really teeny. I'm going to show you here. Hang on. Let me turn this around. This is it. So I have a feeling. This is how far I've gotten. I have a feeling that this is 32 count. I mean, I am just insane. I don't know why I started stitching this one over. It's literally one thread over one, <laughs> one thing. It's one over one. And I think it's 32 count or 
something. I mean, this is like really fine linen. I think it's supposed to be bigger than this, but I just started doing it like this and I loved it. I mean, look at, oh, Lara, look at all the little backstitch. I know you love backstitch. Look at that. Ooh, look at that backstitch. Look at that, girl. Wouldn't you love to do this pattern, Lara? Because it's got so much backstitch. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him. The conductor of the band. So this is only the first two pages. And I think there's six pages to go. There's six pages on this. But look at the pine cone, all the backstitching. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oops, there's a dog hair there. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, backstitch galore. Yeah, and this is my, my little needle is in here waiting for me to come back. To work on this. All right, so that is the Gnome Band by Lenart. And it's a 1980s pattern. Because I was in England 1986 through 89, and I bought this when I first got to England. I went to Guilford School of Acting and Dance in Surrey, and so I bought this back then when I was doing that. Yeah, so that one's still on the go. <laughs> For all of you who have whips that are a couple decades old, don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm going on how many decades on this one? Anyway, it is what it is, folks. All right, here we go. I'm also I'm also working on the Misfit, which if you guys have this, if anybody's working on this, I am loving it. I started it on work last Friday. Um, just as like a... Because sometimes in my office people they don't show up for their appointments or I have a half an hour during lunch that I can stitch. Um, or I have like, I don't know, there might be something going on or there might be a business meeting for other people that I don't have to be in. So, um, anyway, I, I brought some cross stitch to the office and I started working on this on Friday and I worked on it Saturday and Sunday. And this is my progress so far. This is where I am with this whip. This is a 14 count. Uh, er, there it is. So I think this is, so it's two over one Ada on 14 count. And I think what I'm going to do is when I get to doing the bear, I think I'm going to do the bear three over one just because I want some better coverage on this. I want him to like pop out a little bit more. So I was thinking like three or four strands just so that he would stick out a little bit more. Cause see, you can see the canvas through that. I'm not wild about that. I really like not being able to see the canvas in the back. I'm not wild about being able to see the white underneath the penguins. But anyway, that's that one. Okay. Hi again. For those of you who know me from full coverage fanatics, um, you've seen me work on this piece. It is, um, it's a painting by Holly Sierra, who painted this in 2008. Um, I have dog hair in my glasses. <laughs> yeah, my dogs are outside, but they are pretty much present everywhere I go. Sorry, I just noticed that. <laughs> well, that's crazy. I have dog hair in my glasses. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let me try this again. Woo! Anyway, uh, yeah, the symbol for chaos is behind me on the wall. There we go. See, chaos, that's my life. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> take two. Right, so uh, this is, a. Uh, it's called Eden. And um, I am counting it on, I am counting it. I am stitching it on 18 count Ada, uh, full cross two over one. And, um, I emailed Holly Sierra. I've been obsessed with her painting of Eden for since 2008. And I finally, um, email found her on email. Uh, she was on the cover of, um, coastal magazine in South Carolina and gosh, there's the dog hair again. Come on. All right. So, seriously what is that okay maybe it's just a glare i don't know um so she uh emailed me back and i said could i make your painting into a cross stitch pattern um i have a program called max stitch and for those of you who don't have it i have max stitch pro 
Um, so I had never done a pattern like this before. I just didn't even know what it would be like. I had been investigating. I had bought a couple of Heaven and Earth designs, but was too chicken to start any of them. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of stash to show you over the over the course of our floss tubes together. I'm, I have a lot of stash to show you. But anyway, I just want to give you sort of like where I am at with my stitching right now. So I I emailed Holly. She emailed me back and said, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And I said to her, look, this is your art, your pattern. I'm going to stitch it for love and for free and I will email you the PDF when I get it done. I'll email you the PDF if you want to whatever you can do whatever you want with it but this is your copyright um but then i so i've made it really clear when i show this piece that i am stitching it by permission that i contacted the artist that she gave me permission in 2022 to make a pattern and so i started this july 5th 2022 and i will probably have it finished next july which would be 2024 so it'll probably this is probably a two-year piece um, when I put it in max stitch, I didn't know how to adjust the colors. I, I have since learned how, if I had to reprint this pattern again, I think I would, well, let me show you. This is the painting, right? So if I had to redo this painting again, there's a little bit of a glare, sorry. So this is the painting by Holly Sierra. Okay. Isn't it gorgeous? I am so, so obsessed with this. I'll actually, if I can learn how to edit, I will post a picture of this so that you can freeze frame it and look at it in more detail. But see the colors there on the, on the butterfly? That's how it's turned out on my stitching. So here's where I am with my stitching of this. I am on page 19, I guess. So it is absolutely fantastic to stitch. I'm I'm lo I'm absolutely loving it. I'm just adoring it. So that's it's um I'm going to do that weird sorry guys if I'm turning you. Um so it's 27 and a half inches by 24, I think. Is what I'm stitching this. And like I said it's 18 count Ada uh DMC floss, all DMC. Um, and that's that. But I think if I had to do it again, I would adjust, I would adjust this color to be more of the rose red here. And some of the arm colors, I would tone them down. What happened was they turned out more yellow in the pattern See, there are more grays in here. This is like more browns, it turned out. But it's, that's you can sort of, the light is, I don't know. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not, I think it's great for a first thing. And I would not, I'm not, I did actually try to go back and pull some of the stitches out of this. I tried to like redo some of the stitches with more of the red and it just didn't look right. So I went back to what the pattern actually says. But there's some really lovely, there's, it is popcorn heavy, I have to say. It's, it turned out to be, it's incredibly popcorn heavy. It's crazy. It is totally crazy beans. So I have a, I have a nine month pandemic piece, <laughs> uh, cross stitch piece that I did during the pandemic. Nope. That's the dog hair. Yep. Okay. It wasn't the glare. It was with dog hair. Um, I have a nine, a piece that I did. It's like a tree and some bubbles in the background. And it's, it was a joy stitcher package thing. And it's a Chinese company that's apparently not copywritten. And somebody, when I did it on full coverage, fanatics said, that's not, that joy stitchers are not copywritten. They're Chinese company and they don't copyright and they don't give the artist any credit. And I was like, whoa, Dude, like that was my first introduction that this whole cross-stitch community has gotten very, like, I don't know. Like there's just people are like really ethically bound to cross-stitch or something or it's gotten very, I mean, great. Ethics, morals, fabulous. Your own conscience, 
fabulous, but I just felt really, I just felt really attacked in a way. Like I was like, well, I got it from, you know, Amazon. I mean, I was just, who, how did I know? So I actually, I emailed a woman who for a while was my cross stitch, <laughs> my full coverage, uh, mentor. Oh, and I'm going to forget her name too. But anyway, I will post these people's names down here if I can remember. Anyway, um, she's a war vet who has a, who has a cross stitch site and she's incredible and she does lots of, uh, tutorials. And anyway, I emailed her and I was like, do, should I, should I just stop doing this? And she said, no, you're halfway through and you didn't know you didn't do this consciously. You weren't trying to hurt anybody. Like just be more conscious next time. It's fine. And I was like, Phew. okay. So when I finished it, I actually really loved it. And so I framed it and I took it to work. So I have that piece. I may just pop a picture of it in here, but I'm not going to talk about it too much. But that's something that I did finish. It was my first ever full coverage. And that one was crazy cross, uh, like popcorn heavy. It was like, oh my God, so much confetti. Yikes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what that is. I have a lot of more. I have, I have a lot of more. <laughs> Wow. Yes, I have a master's degree. <laughs> I just can't talk. <laughs> I do have other whips. Um, I'm working on a long dog sampler, which I don't know where it is. Hmm. I'll pop a picture of that in here. <laughs> uh, I really, I, I need to sit down and learn how to edit. It may take me forever to edit this. I may not get this up until October because it's going to take me so long to edit. No, maybe not. Um, but I will learn how to edit today and see if I can make this more fun to watch than it is maybe to film. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm rambling. Um, do I have my long dong sampler available? Where would it be? I sometimes take my long dog to work with me as well. Hmm. Um, maybe I'll just wait until next time. Anyway, this is probably long enough. I, I just wanted to say hello. <sighs> um, for those of you who suffer with uh, any kind of mental illness, anxiety, depression, and cross-stitch, and or crafting, or needlework, or something um, helps you, I would be interested in, you know, in just stick a note in the chat or... Um, come back and visit again. Um, you're not alone. I am somebody who has utilized cross stitch as a therapeutic tool and as a way just to feel good. You know, even if I just do 50 stitches a day, there's something in my brain that just goes, ah, the world is safe. <laughs> in the chaos and trauma of everything we have to live in, where everybody wants you to use the appropriate label or speak in the appropriate way or have the appropriate oh. politics or eat the appropriate food or whatever. I can't keep up with it all, quite honestly. I need to disappear into my needlework. I need a place that feels safe. I need a place where I can refresh and feel renewed and feel like I'm in solidarity with other people around the world who are using a needle and thread. And sometimes that's all we need to get through the day. Sorry, I'm going to cry. Um, thank you, Floss Tube community, for receiving my video. Thank you for hearing my story a little bit. Um, thank you, Lara, for encouraging me to do this. <laughs> and um, whether I have met you or not, uh, oh, Mad Morty and Dave, hi. You guys are awesome. I love you so much. Um, what's another one? Oh, 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 uh, Stitching Roadie, I love you. You're amazing. Who else? Shout out to, um, 
Oh, no. I love her, too. She's the woman who always goes thrift shopping. She's like the... Mmm, the... Country Stitch something? The, the Mountain Stitcher? She has mountains in her... No, no, no. I know her. I just emailed her. I emailed her and thanked her for her last video. Oh, something. Ugh! I'm going to learn how to type in all the names of these people. I'm going to pop them on the screen. <laughs> you guys have been my buddies, and you don't even know it. Like, I, I stitch with you, you know? I stitch with the lady in England who... um. Oh, God, what's her name? She always goes to all the floss tube groups in England and all the stitchy conventions, and she does the videos of all her friends and stitching, and... Oh, she's amazing. She's amazing. And I will put her name in here, too, just as a shout-out to you guys. Um, I'll try and remember to, to tag them, if that's the right word for it. Uh, or I'll put them up here. Whatever. I don't know. You guys know who you are. I I admire you. I admire anybody that has the more than five whips going. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and there's a lot of you out there. Ah, okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for letting me be a part of this community um, and having a voice and a face. In my next video, I will have a lot of stash. I also go thrift shopping. Uh-oh! <laughs> Which Lara can tell you because I sent her a bunch of stuff <laughs> that I sent when I found for her. I found her some um, dimensions patterns and mailed them to Australia. I was like, hey, look what I found you! Um, so yeah, I do thrift shopping. <laughs> um, and I am floss addicted. I am completely DMC floss addicted and I have a ton of stash and I will introduce you to all of that stitchy goodness in my next video but for now be well be happy don't be blue just stitch just stitch we are stitching with you thanks guys until next time this is stitch therapy bye